Hi everyone, in this case study slash video, we're going to be looking at Ken Richter's testimonial about video production and mobile video production. How he's been able to save pounds and pounds of cable weight from switching between uh, traditional HDSDI and serial cabling for video control and additional power cables and doing everything over a single Ethernet cable using the PTZ Optics cameras and the new NDI firmware which is coming soon. So let's take a look at this case study. But my story is, is one of constant downsizing and con constant shrinking. Mm -hmm. um, I am an independent contractor. I do on location recording and both video and audio recording. I work with a, a company as a contractor that has deep ties into um, the American Choral Directors Association, the uh, National Association for Music Education, the American String Teachers Association. We travel all over the country recording at conventions and uh, different regional and state level events as well. To uh, go with me and, and make this stuff possible, but I'm always looking to shrink more portable and even more agile, you know, with my with my gear. This was five years ago, and um, this was my setup five years ago. I've always used uh, pan tilt zoom cameras, not necessarily PTZ optics, but I'm, I'm getting there, so just be patient with me. <laughs> this was a 12 rack space no um, unit. It's got a TriCaster in there, as you can see, maybe mm. behind my... Behind my mug, there's a TriCaster hidden in there. But uh, this cool. weighed quite a bit, and the, the stands took up quite a bit of room. Then I moved to um, this system here, which is based on a Blackmagic wow. uh, ATEM TV studio. And those are my cameras that you can see set up there. Uh, I've got 150 feet of umbilical cord on each camera that uh, I can string out and... and run and set up. That took me about an hour and a half to usually set up this system in any given location. So I was getting better, but still that case is getting a little bit heavy. Um, here it is on location. You can see the, the rack there and then some of my, uh, these are Sony cameras that are set up in this gymnasium to record this event. And there's the joystick and everything. Here's the, the back of what it looks like when it's all plugged in and everything. <laughs> kind of a, a lot of wires, but to each camera, I had to run power, I had to run a control circuit, and then I had to run video. So, you know, that's how all my systems have worked. And so the end result is, is that I've got a lot of wire that wow. uh, I have in stock and, and keep handy. I've got everything from 35 foot lengths to 100 foot to 150. And then the blue ones on the left are 250 foot lengths. And if I get into special cases, but the heaviest thing I carry right now, as you can see, is is wire and cabling. And so, can I make it a little bit smaller? Well, yeah, there's some things I can do. Here's here's a briefcase system that I've put together, and this has a, a little um, Roland video switcher in there, a little HDMI 4, 4 input switcher. I don't know if you can see that in the case there or not. Yeah. And then I'm running vMix off to the side because this is a streaming event. I do about 45 to 50 recording events per year. And um, wow. of those 45 to 50 events, probably 15 to 20 are actually live streaming events. So that's what kind of brought me into this group and into the um, into Tom Sinclair's you know group that he has on Facebook and, and everything like that. Because there's a lot of similarities between what I do and what you all are doing with your streaming shows. But um, here's just, uh, let me see if I can find these. Here's an example of my work. Um, this is a final product. One of the, this is up in Michigan at, at their Michigan Music Conference. And you can see some of the different, I use four different cameras typically. A left and a right, uh, a wide shot in the back, and then there's a conductor's camera up to the front. And then I can go between all of those in my, in my usual setup. Wow. So here's what it looks like. Oh, cool. You know, before a concert, before an event, I've got all four cameras set up there. You can see camera one is my wide shot. Camera two is um, the left hand. Camera three is the, well, camera three is the right hand. In this case, I've got a fourth camera down and low. And then the fifth camera you see there is the director's cam. So when people are 
forming, this is kind of what it looks like with those same shots. Where's camera so six? I can see all the different. <laughs> um, camera six could be hooked up, but I, I hardly ever use it. So the the question is, you know, this is kind of my current compact setup. I can I can fly with this and I can I can get places, but can I get smaller yet? And the question or the answer is yes, I can. And this is the beginnings of my current setup a laptop and two PTZ optics cameras. Yes. If I were to win this particular contest, you know, it would it would add to this contest. And just look at the difference in cabling. I mean, on the right, I have 150 foot of ethernet cable. On the left, I have 50 feet of cable. You know, compare it to that. Yeah. And wow. you see that there's, there's, there's no comparison as far as weight and just being able to tape cables down when you're at a venue or something like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's the wave of the future, and, and um, I'm very thrilled earlier this year to find PTZ optics and find cameras that can, that can stream and that can eventually do NDI and, and do all that business, and it just makes my dream of a more portable and more lightweight studio even, even more realistic. So yeah. that's my story, and, and I'm sticking to it. Do you have a small team to help you <laughs> do that whole setup, or...? That that's a single person job. I mean, a single person wow. can set up four or five cameras plus recording microphones in about an hour and fifteen minutes. Okay, should we save and, questions um, for the presenters till the end, or would you like to have them as we go? Um, it's totally up to you. Are you getting a lot of questions for Ken? There, there was one for Ken, and there was one for um, James. The one for Ken, Ted says, how many of your events involve sending images to big screens, either via projector or direct displays like big LCD or video wall? The answer is hardly ever. Um, we're places that have those big screens, I usually use them for other things. Um, and I've never had the opportunity to do iMag or anything like that. It's strictly for recording purposes so that we can make DVDs and recordings available for the participants or for their parents or for um, you know future future archival purposes. And if you're doing a stream, of course, latency is, is a non-issue at that point. Mm -hmm. 200 feet of SDI cable, do you know how heavy that is? You can do... I, I actually compared, I compared weights and uh, 250 feet of my umbilical cable with everything together Compared to the same, compared to 300 feet of Ethernet cable, there's a 10 pound difference between the two. Wow. Yeah. 10 pounds, you know, just in those coils. And I know I'm running power, but I'm running very thin power cable. I mean, I'm running like lamp cord. You know, it's like the thinnest, the, the heaviest cable I have in there is the SDI cable. Mm -hmm. That that again is the thinnest SDI cable that I can find, and still be useful. So yeah, it's it's a real difference. So you don't have any love affair with the SDI days. You're ready to to go to IP. <laughs> the SDI days have been good to me and everything. I have no complaints, but <laughs> there's better things ahead. <laughs> yeah, Chris is on the same Much page. Much better with things you there. ahead. I agree. Yeah. James too. Uh, Ken, Ted has a question for you. What percentage of your events involve both recording and live streaming? And do you see a shift to do more live streaming to content distribution network CDM providers that also archive the program for later viewing or online purchase for the performances? Well, that's, that's a good question. Um, about, about a third of what I do is actually live streamed. And I, I do music events mainly, but I also do some sports and I also do some other things too that are live streamed. But as far as music, um, that gets into a whole discussion about licensing and there's a lot of considerations when it comes to licensing because you need a license to live stream, you need a license to archive and make it available, um, you need a license if you want to make DVDs of it, then they're all separate and they're all different. The company that I work for is extremely knowledgeable and, and very good about licensing issues. Um, normally it's not something I get into, I'm just the engineer that goes out there and, and does the work they take care of securing all of the licenses for either the DVDs or the, the webcast or, or what have you. But um, I, there's a, there's, might be a, a small, slow shift, 
But with companies like like what I work with, it's very slow because we don't want to screw up and do anything wrong because that could put our whole future business model in jeopardy. So we're, we're a little hesitant and a little conservative when it, when it comes to that. Um, it's, it's one thing, we have a blanket license with some of the major organizations for live streaming that allows us to live stream up to so many hours for so many viewers per year. And that's, that's pretty reasonable. So archival is, is a whole different ball of wax that we just chose, have chosen so far not to really get into or explore. So I was amazed how much actual physical weight is in cables, especially SDI cables and serial cables, what we consider traditional cables. So I went ahead and made a little calculator that can show you exactly how much weight you're lugging around with your old uh, traditional cables and how much weight you can save by upgrading to Ethernet cables. Ethernet cables can be uh, extremely affordable, much less expensive than some of the tradi traditional copper cables. And not only that, but we can simplify our setup and everything included. So down Download the guide below at ptzoptics.com slash landing slash cables dot html. So the link will be below. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.